Okay, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taza War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And uh, this one is going to be a quick hit, straight to the point. And uh, I was chopping it up earlier with the brother Mayim. He was breaking bread over the phone. And uh, this topic came up about the mark of the beast all right now you got camps out here still teaching that the uh mark of the beast is an embargo or christianity when christianity and embargo doesn't make sense when it comes to the mark of the beast written in revelations 13 16 all the way to 18 it doesn't make sense all right christianity is a religion christianity we all once were, was a part of we all once believed all right you know going back to jesus christ you know no matter if you were you was in a jehovah's you believe in jehovah you was in pentecost you know you was in the baptist church all right either way you had a form of christianity now when it's written in revelations 14 8 and 9 the excuse me revelations 9 and 10 all right it doesn't make sense because if you got if the mark of the beast is christianity then we all you know should be destined for destruction all right so let's just read here revelations 14 and 9 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark or in his forehead or in his hand receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the most high which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb all right so if we all had the mark of the beast if it was if we all had that mark if it was according to christianity then we're all doomed all right there is no repentance when you take the mark okay so it's clearly not christianity now what's an embargo embargo is a, is basically sanctions you know when you got america uh sanctioning china china sanctioned america vice versa that's what you call an embargo okay that's not the mark of the beast the mark of the beast is something physical all right it's a it's a device well it's a it's a physical cut that implants a device under your skin there's a physical cut basically it's a physical cut okay so let's read here and i'm gonna try to make this fast because it's really two words i really want to go into which is mark and 603 score and six to prove all right that this mark is physical all right it says uh, Revelations 13, 16, and he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or their forehead. Now, when you go into the word mark, all right, it takes you to the Greek word karagma, karagma, all right. And uh, for you newly fruit, new brothers, you know, you got a lot of camps out there, Israelite camps, all right, that are two things. They either ignorant to this knowledge of the mark of the beast and they could be sincerely not uh ignorant secondly or they prideful all right and the majority of them is really prideful because uh here at great millstone our, our elders and apostles here starting with apostle tahar been teaching all right the truth about the mark of the beast for years now all right so it doesn't make sense you know if you call yourself a prophet of the lord a teacher of the lord and you're, you're not, you know, truly building a hedge for the Lord's elect. Building them up for the day of the battle. All right. Shame on you. All right. The scriptures say, the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. So what is going to be our stability? The knowledge of knowing this truth and the wisdom, which Revelations 13, 16 through 18 gets into. The knowledge and the wisdom, knowing and applying wisdom with understanding. All right. Now, our elders, apostles here teach us to get into words and uh, the water, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, for our apostles and elders, bro. Because um, 
it truly gives you more enlightenment to the scripture and importantly it gives us that full assurance of faith all right full insurance of faith as the scriptures get into i believe paul said that having a full insurance of faith all right so you don't have you know no um if, is this the word schism so you don't have no uh interruptions no no amazement all right you know no uh there will be no as the scriptures say you can't gainsay against the truth because you have a full insurance of faith all right so the word karagma quickly karagma meaning a stamp and imprinted mark all right of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the antichrist now anti just means against christ means anointed christos going into the word christos just means uh against the anointed now there's many antichrists i believe that's in james or is it john uh, there's many antichrists because there's not one man as Christianity tells it You know one man that's gonna rise out of nowhere And he, that's Satan himself and everybody's deceived They're gonna love him and when he gets in office, he's just gonna destroy everybody You know He's gonna fight against the Heavenly Father who they ignorantly calls God which his name is Yahweh All right Anybody who's against Yahweh Shai is the antichrist and there's many antichrists all right, so just to clear that up, it says the mark branded upon horses, they carved, sculpture, graven work of idolatrous, idolatrous images. All right, so karagma means a stamp or imprinted mark. Okay, something stamped on the arm, imprinted. All right, something up under the skin, imprinted up on you. All right, like a brand you put on horses. Now, some people may think that this is a tattoo all right it's not a tattoo okay now it says thing carved because you carve into something now some people may think this is a tattoo but this is not tattoo all right well, if you go to leviticus matter of fact i got it in my notes i just quickly say it uh when you go to so like yeah when you go into Leviticus 19 and 28, the, the uh, Hebrew word there for mark is quai quai. Quai quai means incision, imprintment, tattoo, mark. Okay? So that's the difference. And then you have Ezekiel 9 and 6, which is the word mark in Hebrew. That word is the Y. The Y means what? Exemption from judgment. So yeah, the elect will have a mark, but not the mark of the beast. It would be a mark which is the Hebrew word, the Y, exempt from judgment. Whose judgment? Yahweh Bashem Yahushua's judgment. All right. So let's continue. Revelations 13, 16. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads. Okay. So knowing that it's something branded, this is physical. It's not Christianity. It's not an embargo. That's bullshit. All right. So it's something print, uh, something physical and branded and pricked. All right. It says uh, in the right hand on the forehead, the right hand, the forehead is just an indicator, meaning that you have basically, you know, we're going to get into the word. I want to jump the gun. But um, right hand and forehead is an indicator, you know, so you can have this mark in your left leg. You can have it in your left toe, your left butt cheek. All right. It says right hand or forehead. And there's many videos to show you where people already have taken this chip. There's many plenty videos out there where you have paraplegics and many other men, women, who have taken chips in their foreheads. You know, you got something called super soldiers. There's an article that I remember reading, I think the beginning of this year, with China. They said that Ch certain Chinese soldiers are, cons you know, are, are what classified as super soldiers. They have about three microchips in their heads. And they can actually move drones at the thought, you know, three chips in their foreheads and plant it and they can move drones at the thought, just thinking of it and, and telling it what to do. You know, if you understand the madness, OK, of, our, of the enemy Esau, our number one enemy Esau Edom, then you will understand that this stuff, 
that um, we're prophesizing about, these things that we're prophesizing about, it's not far-fetched, man. <laughs> you can laugh all you want and think it's a joke. Esau is that sick. He's that wicked, man. All right? The whole thing, the whole agenda is that they merge humans with technology so that we could be what? Transhumans. So let's continue. It says, uh, verse 17, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And you can clearly see that going in society, that we're, com we're, we're driving down this road and coming into this society where everything is cashless, everything is digital. Eventually, you won't be able to buy unless you have this chip, unless you have this mark of the beast. Okay? They click just... In, 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 a, in a one day, in one day, they changed the way we live. In one day. And that was due to the fact of what they call this C-19, the coronavirus. Now, the instance to certain stores, you got to have masks and gloves. You know? Now they lighten up, you can just wear a mask. But it's coming to a point where we head into that season where they're going to force vaccines. So it's going to come into a point where you can't get into certain establishments unless you got a vaccine. Now... There is reports, I remember uh, seeing a video uh, dealing with Trump, but it was his, one of his spokesmen, and she was speaking and answering questions about, is Trump going to force everyone to take a vaccine? Now, according to her words, and speaking on behalf of Trump, Donald Trump, he said that it's not going to be a force as if they're going to grab people out of their homes, but it's going to be equivalent to the flu vaccine, whether you want to take it or you don't. Now, me and a brother was breaking bread early this morning, me and my, uh, my, uh, my um, uh, you know, and we were speaking on this and how it still is going to be forced. It's still going to be forced because if you got certain uh, establishments, stores, you know, restaurants, movie theaters, certain events that you can't get in unless you get vaccinated, that's their way of force. So everything they're doing is, is basically behind one word called gradualism. All right. They're gradually bringing you down this road until they officially bite down with their teeth and force these microchips upon you, okay? So anyway, it says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. All right, so remember, the word mark goes into karagma, something physical, Okay, and now we have 600, 3 score, and 6. Now, when you go into that word, it leads you to the Greek word, chi, phi, stigma. Chi, phi, stigma. All right, so let me grab a quick precept. This is Galatians 6 and 17, all right, which this is Apostle Paul speaking. It says, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear my body the marks of of the Lord Yahweh Shai. All right? The marks of the Lord of Yahweh Shai. So did Apostle Paul have the mark of the beast? No. What is Apostle Paul saying? Before I get that, let's go into the word mark. Okay? Now the word mark The word mark All right, the word mark here goes into the Greek word stigma, stigma, all right, so when you look this word stigma, all right, here in the uh, blue letter, it says a mark pricked in or branded upon the body, okay, it says a mark pricked in or branded upon the body to ancient oriental usage, slaves and soldiers bore the name or the stamp of their masters or commander branded or pricked, cut, all right, so another one for stigma means to cut into their bodies to indicate what masters or general they belong to. It says, and there were even some devotees who stamped themselves in this way with the token of their gods. Okay, so this word stigma means to prick, stick, uh, a mark pricked it in or branded upon the body. All right, and um. Now, I just want to bring up something real quick. I'm going to try to hurry up. I don't have too much memory. Uh, let me go into this word 
stigma in the Google letter in the Google um, in Google. All right, because this word stigma can also mean two things. Okay, it can mean a stick prick, or it can also be this. It says a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. So it says the stigma of having gone to prison will always be with me. All right, so you can say that this word stigma, you being a part of a stigma, Paul was a part of the stigma of Yahweh Shah. And, and that's just as well as us. He also said that we're prisoners of Yahweh Shai. All right. So really going back, um, going back into here, this um, Galatians 6 and 17, what Paul is actually saying, it says, From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear my body the marks of the Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. Because he was a part of what? That stigma. That stigma of Yahweh Shai being a part of what? Let's go back to Google. It says a mark or disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality or of a or a person, excuse me. You know, so you know, if it says here the stigma of having gone to person, going to prison will always be with me. You know, you being basically, you know, this shame, this disgrace, this dishonor, according to this Google definition. But in Yahweh Shah, there is no shame or disgrace or dishonor. All right. You know, if if we're shame, if we're um humiliated. It's because we live in the body and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah right now. Okay? We're being reproached for his name's sake. So we're a part of what? That stigma. All right? But the word stigma can also mean, let's go back here and to Mark, just to prove Revelation 13, 16, because remember, that's what this is about. Revelation 13, 16 through 18, the mark of the beast. Let me go back here to stigma. Right? Stigma. Now let's go down to Strong's definition. It says stick, prick, a mark incised or punched. Okay? Now, when you look up this word incise, right? You look up this word incise. 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 It says mark or decorate or decorate an object or surface with a cut or a series of cuts it says cut a mark of declaration into a surface so we know that stigma means a cut something to cut into all right you're cutting into something it says now here's the point cut skin or flesh with a surgical instrument all right and what is that surgical instrument that will be used um that will be used to deliver the mark of the beast. That needle. That needle, man. So let's go back to uh, Revelations 13 and 16. Well, 18. It says, Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, 3 score and 6. All right. So when you look up this word mark, it goes into karagma. Something physical and branded. All right. Then you have... Um, 603 score and six which represents sci-fi stigma all right and stigma means to what prick okay stick all right and then when you look that word up incised incise incise means to do what cut skin or flesh with the surgical instrument so there's no getting around all right the mark of the beast it's clear as day what the mark of the beast is man it's clear you know i wanted to make this quick but I guess it's about 20 minutes in, but, you know, importantly, I hope you were edified, all right? You know, when you just read Revelation 13, 16, it's more, it's more. Keep reading at 18, all right? Because you can clearly see that the mark of the beast, all right, is something physical, all right? If anybody tell you it's a Christianity or embargo, embargo, they are false prophets, man. That's why we give double honors to our apostles and elders, all right, and all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, for giving us, giving his, uh, his Rakakwadas, his Holy Spirit, to our apostles and elders, and down to the brothers and like minded to understand this truth. All right, the apostles taught us to look up words. And uh, when you look up words, you know, it's, it's truly, surely open your eyes. And that's to give you that full insurance of faith. All right, in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. 
which which will give you that that knowledge and wisdom for the stability of thy times. All right, because we're clearly living in a time which is a perilous time. All right, a troubled time for Jacob, which goes into Jacob's trouble. You know, now, you know, everything's open back up, kids out, no more social distancing to the point where it's tedious, you know. But the scriptures say, um, when they shall seek peace, there shall be none. You know, what it says, sudden destruction come upon them. So you can clearly see we're in that season, we're in that time, you know. And we're still looking forward for them forcing these chips, all right. Trump is going to force vaccines, you know, either way, whether he says it and still do it, you know, he said it, a warp speed. But now, whether he's backtracking or whether he's just trying to comfort people and stop stop them from this, uh, you know, I guess this scare or whatever, whatever, whatever's going on, you know, either way, it's going to be done because Revelations 12 and 12, oh, I should have just went back. Uh, Revelations 12 and 12, and I ended with this. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. All right? So these Edomites know they have but a short time and they're going to come down having great wrath, man. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom. Shalom.